Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about the other planet that's not Venus that might have life on it as well, Mars. And at this point, it's anyone's guess where we're going to discover extraterrestrial life first. Is it going to be in the clouds of Venus, around 50 kilometers above the surface of the planet, or is it going to be somewhere deep underground on the planet Mars? Today we're going to be talking about the recent discovery, or technically the recent rediscovery, of something that scientists thought they found a few years ago. Something that looked like an actual liquid water lake, but not on the surface of Mars, somewhere deep within the Martian regolith. In other words, it was roughly around 1.5 kilometers underneath the surface of Mars. And what this recently published paper suggests is that, well, there's not one, but possibly four or even more lakes hiding in the region known as Ultimae Scopuli or Scopuli, the region where we will also discover these unusual features you see on the screen. And if I were to try to find it here on the map of Mars, which was actually created by Google Maps, it's somewhere right here in the southern region of Mars. And the first lake was discovered around two years ago, but it wasn't really confirmed and actually created a bit of a controversy because the scientists were not entirely convinced that what they were looking at was actually caused by liquid water. And the way it was found is actually the same way we find underground lakes here on planet Earth. Here on Earth, by using an aircraft, for example, we can usually use a type of a radar to look through the ice and to see what's underneath it. This is exactly how we've discovered that, for example, there was an extremely large crater in Greenland only approximately a year ago. And this is also how we've discovered that there are a lot of these underground lakes, or technically under ice lakes, located all across the Antarctica. As a matter of fact, the most famous and the biggest such under ice underground lake is this right here. This is known as Lake Vostok. And what you're looking at right here is the radar image of this really, really large body of water. And naturally, I wanted to see if there's anything visible on Google Earth if we were to go to Lake Vostok. Unfortunately, you cannot see anything on the surface. It looks completely invisible because it's underneath a very, very thick layer of ice. Nevertheless, because it's located right in the middle of Antarctica, and also because it does seem to contain huge amounts of liquid water underneath, the scientists for many years now have been trying to capture the samples from this lake and discover if there's any life underneath there. Unfortunately, even today, they still haven't been able to get these samples because it's really challenging to try to drill this deep and to try to recover a sample of water that's not contaminated by anything. And in the past, they did actually contaminate one of the samples by accident. But they have recovered similar samples from other lakes in the vicinity and very unusual life was discovered in these lakes. And various bacterial cultures captured from the lakes in Antarctica were revived by the scientists back in 2014, with the story itself being one of the biggest stories published in the Nature magazine. In other words, life in these lakes is definitely possible, which means that life in lakes on Mars is possible. Which once again brings us back to the paper that seems to have discovered at least a few of these lakes with smaller ones being a few kilometers across and the largest one being a whooping 30 kilometers in diameter. This would make it maybe about 12 or so times smaller than the Lake Vostok in terms of the surface area, but it still would be a really significant discovery, assuming of course it is liquid water after all. And here the question is, if it is liquid water, how is it possible? Well, in terms of liquid water surviving on Mars, the biggest problem here is of course the lack of pressure. The atmospheric pressure on Mars just doesn't allow for water to exist. Here I can try to simulate this by adding a little bit of water to this Mars, and notice how instead of just getting a liquid ocean, everything turns into ice instantly. Which is of course exactly what we've been seeing on Mars, there seems to be a lot of ice present on the surface, and even these strange textures seem to have been formed by some sort of ice activity. But the conditions for liquid water are just not there. However, once we start going into Mars, underneath the Martian surface, the pressure from the ground above us will start increasing. And for a pretty similar reason to how lakes can exist in Antarctica underneath the ice, even though the temperatures are pretty cold here, at some point the pressure itself will allow for liquid water to exist. Although instead of ice, like in Antarctica, in this case it's the ground itself that's causing the lake's formation. On top of this, the waters here would be hypersaline. They would be extremely, extremely salty. In this case, we could even refer to these waters as briny waters, the saltiest waters possible. 
And this type of water can easily exist in low pressure conditions and also low temperature conditions, meaning that liquid water in this case would be absolutely possible. And we know that Martian rock already has quite large amounts of, for example, calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium, and when mixed with water, all of these would produce brine waters or salty waters quite easily. So the existence of briny liquid waters is definitely not an impossibility. Okay, double negative. No, it's definitely possible. There is nothing stopping Mars from having these liquid oceans or technically liquid lakes underneath its surface. Although in this case, it seems that from pretty much the entire survey of the surface of Mars, only these lakes were discovered so far. So it seems that having liquid water underneath Mars is still quite rare. But since this survey has covered roughly around 300 by 300 kilometers in area and only discovered these lakes, it means that liquid water even underneath Mars is still pretty rare. Also, unlike the previous survey from a couple of years ago, here they use new data available from NASA and specifically data available from the European Space Agency's Mars Express that has this beautiful instrument called Marsis that sort of acts as a radar and scans the area underneath it. So along with NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter that you see right here that uses a radar system known as Sharad or Shallow Radar Sounder, the scientists behind this paper and the previous paper were able to collect a lot of data from underneath Mars and to combine it all together, allowing the scientists to gather enough data from Mars to be able to publish the study. And here's actually how all of this looks like in regards to the um, ice in the South Pole. The region right here on the bottom, that's where they found the underground lakes. But what about the possibility of life here? Well, even though here on Earth, when we have liquid water, we usually have life, on Mars it might be a different story, and the main reason here is because we don't really know where this life would get its energy from. For example, Enceladus and Europa, where we think life might exist, could get their energy from the underground hydrothermal vents that we believe are present on both of these objects. Mars, on the other hand, doesn't seem to have anything like this, and any kind of a chemical energy, for example, that could be produced through the interaction between liquid water and Martian surface, would unfortunately not be enough for life to thrive and to even survive here. So maybe if there was a volcano on Mars or if some other energetic component was present here, it would be quite easy to explain how life can live here. But as it stands right now, from the perspective of life here on planet Earth, life in these Martian lakes seems a little bit unlikely. But nevertheless, life was unlikely on Venus as well. But now we seem to have signs of life on Venus 50 kilometers above the surface. So now we just have to find signs of life on Mars about 1.5 kilometers underneath. Although getting there and also drilling into the Martian surface is still kind of beyond our capabilities right now. We have kind of need to build a colony first, we need to find a way to drill into the Martian rock, and we of course need to establish ourselves on this planet first. So I guess your move, Elon Musk. Let's see what we can find there. But on this note, that's all I wanted to mention about this particular study, which you can, as always, find in the description below. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also, consider supporting this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that you can also find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.